Hi, Zach here. And as 3D artists, we love to spend most of our time staring at our 3D models from all angles instead of actually working on them. So why not make good use of our time instead and put this staring experience to a whole new level? For this, we will create an automated camera focus and lighting setup that adjusts to the position of the camera when moving it in the 3D viewport. And this works both in Cycles and EV. And by the way, if you don't want to watch a long video, check out the one minute tutorial for the autofocus effect in the info box. So let's open something we want to stare at. It can be anything. Here I have a creature I sculpted. First, let's set up the camera autofocus. For that, let's select the scene collection, press C to create a new collection, call it something like render. And here we will put the camera lights and so on. Then let's hit shift A and add a camera from the side view, press alt R to reset the rotation, rotate it 90 degrees and put it somewhere here at the front. Make sure the camera is selected, press shift S and click on cursor to select it. Then the 3D cursor as here at the position of the camera, hit shift A, add an empty object and call it something like focus. Then let's parent the empty to the camera, select it over here, hold down shift and place it on the camera. Then this will be parented. It means when I move the camera, the empty will move along. Now let's split our view over here. Then here hit numpad zero to look through the camera and press the home key to full screen the camera area. Then let's select the camera, go to the camera settings down here, viewport display and under passport 2 let's crank this up to 1 so we can only see what's inside the camera here. And let's also enable limits which will show us this line with this yellow cross over here. Then let's go over to depth of field, let's enable depth of field and over here middle mouse button click, let's move this to the side and let's go over to the rendered viewport shading. We are currently using EV but we don't see anything here, we don't have any light set up so let's quickly go up here and disable the scene world so we can pick up any HDRI here, for example, this one. So now you can see this creature is out of focus because the focus point is back here. And now with changing the focus distance, we can change the focus onto the head of the creature. However, we don't want to manually change the focus here. We want to use this empty object instead. So let's use this eyedropper and pick this focus object. Now, since this focus object is directly here at the camera, it's completely out of focus. However, if I now move this empty object, you can see how we can change the focus onto the creature. Hey, so what? You want to learn how to create this creature? Well, glad you ask. In my Master 3D Sculpting in Blender course, you will learn exactly that, plus basically everything you need to know about sculpting in Blender. Link below. Now we want to tell this focus object to always stay on the surface of the creature. For that, make sure this is selected, go to the constraints and add the shrink wrap constraint. Then as target, let's pick the creature here. And now you can see this object immediately jumps to the creature. When I now move the camera, you can see, however, that this empty object is weirdly jumping around. So let's change the mode over here to project. And now we have to define the project axis. And this we can quickly figure out by pressing T, go to the move tool, make sure this empty is selected, go to the local transform orientation. And now you can see positive Y is pointing in this direction. Let's quickly disable this again. That means let's change this to positive Y. And now you can see it jumps over here. And now when I move this onto the creature, it will always be perfectly in front of the camera. However, there's a little problem. You can see that the tongue of the creature is ignored. And that's because the tongue and also the eyes are separate objects. And over here in the constraint, we can only pick one object as target. That means we somehow need to merge all the objects together in order to pick it here as target. However, you maybe don't want to destroy your model by joining everything together. So there's a more elegant solution using geometry nodes. Yay. So let's Let's go to scene collection, press shift C to place a 3D cursor down here and add whatever mesh object you like, for example, a plane. Let's rename this into creature merged, for example. And now let's split our view down here and open up the geometry node editor. Let's press N over here and let's go to the modifier tab. Geometry nodes is basically a modifier using nodes. That means if I click new here, you can see that on this plane, we generated this geometry nodes modifier. 
modifier. And down here we have this node editor with a group input and a group output. And currently we are inputting the mesh of this plane and outputting this so we can see it over here. However, if I press shift A, you can see we have a gazillion of nodes which we can use to change this mesh or alter the universe. Well, here, however, we want to do something very simple. Make sure that all the objects you want to merge are in one collection. Then drag and drop this collection into the node editor. Then we can actually drag and drop this onto this line. Then this will be disconnected here. That means we don't see the original mesh of the plane anymore. However, we now connect the geometry of the whole collection into the geometry output. That means this plane will be replaced by the whole creature, including all the objects of this collection here. That means if I disable this collection, we can still see the creature. And now any changes I do to this collection up here or to the objects inside the collection will also be reflected down here. So that means even if you have an object with 100 objects or more, you can merge them like this. It now generated an instance of this collection into this mesh object. However, if I go back to my empty object here, go to the constraints and now select this creature merged, it is not working. So we have to convert this into an actual mesh we can work with. So let's select this, hit shift A, go to search and search for the realize instances node and plug it behind here. And that's all. Now we import the collection, turn this into a real mesh. And now you can see this focus object will stay on the surface and it will even include the tongue and the eyes. That means we can now close the geometry nodes window and we are basically done with our setup. Let's quickly go to the render settings and enable ambient occlusion and crank up the distance a bit, which make this look a bit nicer. And then over here, let's disable the viewport overlays and gizmos, then middle mouse button click, move this over here. Let's go to view, navigation and walk navigation. Here, let's right click and add this to our quick favorites. And now we can press Q over here and pick the walk navigation. Now down here in the info bar, you can see a lot of shortcuts and now we can control our camera as playing a video game by using WASD to move around, E and Q to move up and down, and we can scroll the mouse wheel up and down to increase or decrease the speed. We can hold down shift to basically run. And now you can see we can look at the creature and the focus will always adjust automatically. Just take care when you look away from the creature, it will get out of focus. Look at that, how cool this is. And over here we can see how this empty object is now always placed on the surface. Now let's press Alt R and Alt G, bring the camera back into the front of the creature here. Now, I can't all the what? You can't remember all the shortcuts? Well, we know more. Simply sign up to our free resource section and download our regularly updated Blender shortcut PDF. Besides the project files of most of our YouTube videos and much more, link below. Now back to our creature here. Let's enhance this with a cool lighting setup. First of all, we still have the creature merged visible here, but let's turn it off for the viewport and the rendering. The focus here will still work as you can see on the moving empty object. And let's re-enable the creature collection. So this is our original collection. And as mentioned, all the changes we would do here will also be reflected in this creature merged. Now make sure the render collection is selected. Then hit Shift A, go to light and add an area light. Right now we are using Eevee here. However, the lighting looks a bit nicer in cycles. So let's switch over to cycles. Then let's switch to GPU compute, which is a bit faster for me. And let's enable denoise. Over here, when I use the walk navigation, you can now see that this setup also works in cycles. Now up here, middle mouse button click and move this over to the side. Let's enable scene world and let's turn the world strengths down to zero. So we just have a black background. Now let's create a simple three point light setup. Let's rename this area light into light key or key light and then move this up here somewhere in front of the head pointing towards the head with shift C make sure the 3D cursor is down here at the center and change the transform pivot point to 3D cursor. That means from the top view we can now rotate objects around the 3D cursor and the key light is brighten up our subject slightly from the side either from the right or from the left side. It's totally up to you. Then in the light settings you can also increase the size if you like but this will also to make the shadow softer. And you can also increase the power. Maybe let's go with 50 here. Then let's shift D, duplicate this and place this roughly on the opposite side. This one we call light back. So it's the backlight. And here I usually increase the power quite a bit. 
So we have this strong rim light here, which separates the creature from the background a bit. And if you like, you can even color this to make this look more intense. Here I have this orange clay shader, so a blue complementary color works nicely here. So and as addition, if you like, you can duplicate the key light, place it somewhere here to brighten up the dark spots. But here we use a very low strength. And let's call this fill light. You can of course play around with the sizes of the different lamps here. But in order to scale this better, switch this back to median point and then you can scale these lights. And as little addition here in the render settings under color management, you can change the look to medium high contrast, for example, to add a bit more contrast over here. So this looks all nice. However, if I now use the walk navigation to move around our creature here, you can see the lighting stays as it is. However, I want the light to rotate around the creature along with the camera. And this is a super simple setup. Make sure the render collection is selected with shift C, the 3D cursor is down here at the center, then hit shift A and add a simple empty object. Let's call it light controller and then select all the lights with control left click and then hold down shift left click and hold and drag and drop this onto the light controller. Now I can rotate the light controller and you can see that the lights will rotate around our subject. Now we just have to tell this light controller to rotate along with the camera. For that Make sure it's selected, go to the constraints and add the copy rotation constraint. As target, let's pick the camera. However, now it's copying all the three rotation axes of the camera, but we only need the Z axis here. That means if I rotate the camera around Z, you can see how the light will adjust automatically. However, sometimes you might want to adjust the rotation of this empty a bit more, but this is currently not possible if I rotate around the Z axis. So we have to change the mix from replacement place to add. That means we can rotate this, but still it will follow the camera. So now if we have a look from the top over here and here, let's go to the walk navigation and move around our creature, you can see how the lighting setup is adjusting automatically. And no matter from what angle we are looking at the creature, it all looks pretty cool. And then if you place it here and you realize it's too bright, for example, we can simply rotate this a bit more to make it look more epic. One other thing you can do is to select the camera, go to the camera settings and change the lens to, for example, 24 millimeters. So we get a little bit more information into our image. And we can also change the f-stop value here under the depth of field settings. The more you lower this, the stronger this depth of field effect will be. So if you want to have this close up here and then the rest is really out of focus. And you can also press Control Alt Space to frameless full screen this 3D view. Press the home key and now let's use the walk navigation to check out the creature from all different angles. Look at that, pretty awesome. Now you could simply select everything which is inside the render collection, right click, select objects, then press Ctrl C, open up a different scene, press Ctrl V and paste the entire setup. Then you only have to create a merged object from whatever you have in your scene using the same geometry node setup and change the focus object here in the shrink wrap modifier of the focus empty. And then you can reuse this setup in any other scene. And by the way, if you're wondering here on the creature, I have a custom clay shader, which automatically adjust to the shape of the object here. And if you want to learn how to create it, it is all covered in my sculpting course. Now as a little proof that this setup also works with basically any other object, here I have this vehicle. And as you can see here in the collection, we have a lot of sub collection. This consists out of many, many different objects. And we are even using curve objects and empty object over here. And then I turn this whole collection into this vehicle merged object with the same geometry node setup as for the creature. And then I use this as the focus object here for our shrink web constraint of the camera focus and then I have EV enabled with ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections. I have the rendered viewport shading enabled and I disabled scene world and used this specific HDRI over here. So the whole setup is also working nicely in EV. That means over here with the walk navigation, if we zoom in, you can see how the focus is working super nicely. 
And by the way, there's another cool trick. Let's press N and enable lock camera to view. And now if I go to the preferences with F4 preferences, go to navigation and make sure orbit around selection is enabled. Now we can select anything here and then use the default navigation tools for the viewport to navigate around our subject. So you can select an object and rotate around here. And then you have this nice autofocus effect here as well. And if we now press control alt space, then the home key, we have this nice full screen and can stare at our object as long as we like until the sun goes down. Yeah, then go up here, click on this little icon to get back. And if you want to enjoy this scene here as well, you can download this in our free resource section along with the camera and lighting setup. And don't forget to check out the sculpting course and the shortcut PDF or the links down below. Thanks a lot for watching. Zach out.